In a big fort, soldiers were getting ready for a battle. Suddenly, a soldier told General Wei, who led the Song Dynasty, that a lot of enemies were coming quickly and had surrounded them. Over 10,000 enemies, wearing iron armor and riding horses, were there. The enemies threw what looked like big rocks, but it turned out to be a group of troops wearing cloaks like flying squirrels. They flew across the fort. Soldiers on top of the fort, who hadn't expected this, tried to shoot them but failed. The enemies landed inside the city, attacked the guards, and opened the city gate for the rest of their troops. Zhang Junbao, who was drunk, joined the fight with his little cousin Shi Mei and friends. The enemies, feeling overwhelmed, decided to retreat, but took Shi Mei with them. Jun Bao and his friends chased the enemies into the woods. In the woods, the two enemies who kidnapped Shi Mei were attacked by a giant silkworm and eaten alive. Jun Bao arrived in time to save Shi Mei and fought the giant silkworm. A woman named Yue Er tamed the silkworm with her flute. Jun Bao was struck by her beauty, but she accused them of being traitors. Jun Bao explained the situation, but Yue Er didn't believe him. Mesmerized by her beauty, Jun Bao didn't care about her accusation. Yue Er then rode away on the giant silkworm. Back in the Song Dynasty, General Wei asked for backup troops from his master to fight off the overwhelming enemy. His master, busy enjoying his meal, ignored him. General Wei told his subordinate to secretly recruit volunteer troops so that the D clan wouldn't find out. Outside, General Wei approached Jun Bao and asked for help in the war. But Jun Bao said no. He told General Wei that the war wasn't his concern, as he was just an ordinary guy and not fit to help in the war. Later, Shi Mei asked Jun Bao for some money, but instead of giving her money, he gave her a paper propeller toy. In a distant land, Wu Ji Cult and Jun Bao found an old guy held captive. Chains bound him heavily, but Jun Bao offered peach blossom wine, even with his hands chained. The old man, using a clever trick with his palm, sipped the wine and praised its taste. Jun Bao, curious, asked about the trick. The old man shared a dangerous technique, explaining the balance between good and evil in martial arts. Meanwhile, a leadership position in the cult awaited, and Jun Bao was supposed to fight Man Fong. Arrived late, Jun Bao used the trick he learned from the detained old guy in Kui Sky cult. Although he won, his seniors accused him of learning an evil trick. Jun Bao defended himself, insisting on the goodness of the heart. His seniors, unconvinced, advised the Grandmaster to take back the key given to Jun Bao. They believed he was influenced by an evil spirit. The Grandmaster, thoughtful, asked Jun Bao to contemplate the situation. Confused, Jun Bao followed the advice but discovered his key was missing. In Yue Air Fort, Declan came with their soldiers to ask for help. They wanted to work together to rescue Yue Air's master, who was captured by Wu Ji Cult. Yue Air didn't like the idea because she thought Declan was evil. She argued with her followers, but one of them convinced her that Dai Klan could help free their master. Still, Yue Air refused and was attacked by someone from Dai Klan. She got a black mark on her chest and had to run away. The attacker said she only had three days to live because of the mark. Meanwhile, Yue Air's followers joined Declan to destroy Wu Ji cult and save their master. They made the Declan prince their leader. In Wu Ji Fort, Jun Bao was making a special medicine and planning to sell it to the elders. Shi Mei told Jun Bao that their friends couldn't find the key they needed. Jun Bao said he would go to Wan Bao Pavilion and buy more paper propellers for Shi Mei. He asked her to keep making beads using a big furnace he used for his medicine. On his way to Wan Bao Pavilion, a giant silkworm stole Jun Bao's wine. He chased the worm and found it leading him to Yue Er, who was lying down. Jun Bao saw the poison mark on her chest and gave her the medicine he made earlier. He knew it could detoxify the poison. Even though one pill might be enough to cure her, Jun Bao tried a trick with a long bamboo stick to help Yue Er. In Wuji Castle, a guy named Man Fong and his team were approached by someone who used to work for Yue Er. This person wanted to free their captured master inside the castle. Meanwhile, in the woods, Yue Er woke up and realized that Jun Bao had helped and saved her life. Even though they were supposed to be enemies, Yue Er thanked Jun Bao for his kindness. Jun Bao complimented her beauty, offered her his wine, and they had a friendly conversation. After a while, Yue Er left, and Jun Bao expressed hope that they would meet again. Later, 
Shimei found Junbao in the woods and mentioned that she accidentally blew off a giant furnace. Junbao scolded her for that. Suddenly, they heard a loud noise from Wuji Castle, indicating that something was wrong. Back in the castle, Yuier's former subordinate, a man in a scary white mask, and a mysterious woman fought against Man Fong and his team. Unfortunately, they were all defeated by the guy in the mask, who used transparent white threads to control and defeat Wuji's subordinates. The chief of D-Clan's prince arrived and urged them to quickly release their master. While they continued to fight Wuji's subordinates, the masked man and the mysterious woman went to the underground jail where the Kui clan's master was chained. They used the iron key that Jun Bao had been searching for to release their master. Wuji's clan members tried to resist, but Kui clan's master and his team defeated them. Upstairs, Jun Bao and Shi Mei reached Wuji Castle and discovered that all their comrades, including Man Fong, had been killed. Before Man Fong passed away, he couldn't explain what had happened. In the underground jail, Jun Bao and Shi Mei received a plaque from Wuji Master before he passed away. Jun Bao and Shi Mei were sad by a river. Shi Mei gave Jun Bao a paper propeller to make him feel better. Jun Bao thought about Kui Master's words about good and evil in the world. Meanwhile, in the woods, Yua Er, playing her flute, met Kui Master, who turned out to be her father. Yu Er regretted not saving him in the past twelve years. Kui Master explained that their cult was rejected by the eight cults, and Yu Er's mother was killed in their war, causing him to hold a grudge. Back at Kui's castle, Kui Master was angry at his subordinates for working with Dai Clan and nearly harmed his daughter. Dai Clan's chief reminded him of their help and offered assistance in destroying the other cults. Kui Master wanted to end his revenge and refused Dai Clan's help. After Wuji cult was destroyed, Kui Master believed the other cults would unite against Kui cult. In the Song Dynasty, General Wei was ordered to leave the city to fight Dai Clan. Jun Bao shared his plan to talk to the eight cults and combat Kui cult, which allied with Di Clan. General Wei wanted to join forces, but Jun Bao insisted on going alone for revenge. He bid farewell to General Wei and left. In the place where Wu Ji's master suffered, a scary masked man allied with the evil side, using Wu Ji's master's power until he perished. To unlock his full potential, the man needed a crystal from a giant silkworm. Jun Bao and Shi Mei headed to Wong Cliff, where the eight cults' masters gathered. Upon reaching the cliff, Jun Bao greeted them, but they remained silent. Kui Master, arriving before Jun Bao, revealed he had defeated them all, sarcastically thanking Jun Bao for the unintended gathering. Angry, Jun Bao fought Kui Master using his tricks, but Kui Master's power was too strong, and Jun Bao got knocked down. Shi Mei told Jun Bao that Yue Er, Kui Master's daughter, was evil. However, Yue Er tried to stop her father, mentioning that Jun Bao once saved her life. As Kui Master and Yue Er tried to leave, an evil guy in a mask from the D Clan blocked them, wanting to kill Kui Master. Jun Bao joined the fight against the masked guy, but his power was overwhelming. Suddenly, Jun Bao's sword hit the mask, revealing his good friend General Wei. Jun Bao realized Wei was a traitor because of his corrupt master. Shi Mei and Kui Master tried to fight back, but it was unsuccessful. Shi Mei was choked and poisoned, and Kui Master was killed. Despite this, he managed to summon the giant silkworm to save his daughter, Jun Bao, and Shi Mei. After the giant silkworm saved them and landed in the woods, Shi Mei's condition worsened, and the poison claimed her life. Her last words urged Jun Bao to promise to like her in their next life. Jun Bao, grief-stricken, made the promise and mourned, then buried Shi Mei in the woods. Later, a strong wind signaled an attack by the man in the white mask and the mysterious woman who had betrayed Kui Kult. Jun Bao was overpowered, tied with transparent threads, and repeatedly punched before being thrown into a river. In the river, shadows of Kui Master Yue Er and Wei appeared, calling Jun Bao's name. Kui Master explained the yin-yang theory, emphasizing the coexistence of good and evil. Jun Bao, regaining consciousness, recalled his learned movements and tricks. Inspired, he embraced the pain of life and accepted the world's purpose. Revitalized, Jun Bao embodied a newfound power called Wu Ji's Way. Returning to the woods, he easily defeats the man in the white mask and the mysterious woman, emerging victorious without breaking a sweat. In a distant forest, Yue Er, guarded by the giant silkworm, walked at night. 
she set the worm free, telling it to no longer follow her. Meanwhile, in Kui Castle, Wei was recruited by the Dai Clan Prince to destroy the powerful cults. Despite the tempting offer, Wei arrogantly declined, considering his subordinates weak and useless. He killed the Clan Prince's women chief with her own sword and then killed the Clan Prince himself. Wei was very strong, and he could easily defeat others. Then Yue Er came seeking revenge for her father. She fought bravely, and even Wei admitted she was courageous for facing him alone. Suddenly, Jun Bao appeared in a white cloak and fought Wei while Yue Er battled Wei's followers. During the intense fight, Kui Castle shook. A silkworm arrived to help them by trapping Wei in sticky silk. Jun Bao struck a few blows, but Wei, overwhelmed, killed the silkworm. With the crystal from the worm, Jun Bao sensed something bad. Wei seemed possessed, and the castle crumbled, causing a rock to fall on Jun Bao and Wei, sending them downstairs. Yu Er faced numerous enemies upstairs, but Jun Bao's comrades arrived to help her. Downstairs, Jun Bao asked Wei about their common goal to destroy the dynasty. They continued to fight, and it turned out Wei was nearly entirely possessed due to the crystal. Jun Bao fought to detoxify Wei, successfully removing the poison. Weakened, Wei warned Jun Bao that using the remaining energy would be fatal, but Wei insisted on fighting. In the end, Wei died trying, expressing a final goodbye and a hope to meet again as friends in the next life. Upstairs, Yue Er mourned the dead silkworm. After the battle, Jun Bao helped Yue Er leave to find a world where martial arts didn't involve revenge. She bid farewell to Jun Bao, who was then questioned by his cult brother about letting her go. Jun Bao believed if they were meant for each other, they would meet again. He then decided to change his name to Zhang Sanfang, expressing his desire for a new identity.